I kind of. Okay, so this is dobo. Yeah, do, oh, dorobo. Yes, dorobo. This means thief. Dorobo. So in Japanese, the particle wa marks the subject. Um, for example, could you read this sentence for me? You got two katakana characters here. So it's kon wa dorobo da. Perfect. Do you know what this means? It means that kon is a thief. Perfect. And then I also have kon wa otoko no ko da, which do you know what this means? This one means kon is a boy. Perfect. Yep. And you can also have this with verbs like ugoku, which means to move. Kon wa ugoku, kon moves. Or nusumu, which means to steal. Kon wa nusumu, kon steals. Sure. Yes. So our next vocab word we're learning, can you read it for me? Niru. This means to be, to look similar to something. Niru, to be similar, but in a pure visual way. So to physically look similar. Can okay. you read this for me? It's kon wa dorobo to niru. Perfect. So to, sorry, could you say that again? I'm sorry, interrupt. Uh, you, uh, kon look like a thief. Exactly, that is what it's saying. So the verb niru um, is, this to is basically what we, is one of the things you can use with niru. You can also use ni. So if it said kon wa dorobo ni niru would be the normal way to say kon looks like a thief. To is actually making this say thieves and con are similar. They look similar. So it's a different way to say that same kind of sentence because to is basically the word and in Japanese. So dorobo to kon wa um, niru is um, thieves and con look similar. Okay. Here's a new word. Can you read it for me? Um, majutsu shi. Perfect. This means magician. Specifically, the jutsu is like the ability that is like the spell technique. Ma is the magic, and the shi is for the teacher, the master of it. So the master of magic magic techniques would be a literal translation of this word. Got um, it. Can you read this sentence for me? This is dorobo wa majutsu shi to niru. What does this mean? Uh, it means the thief is similar in appearance to the magician. Yes. Thieves and magicians are similar. Perfect. So now we're actually going to be learning a kanji. This is the ma that showed up in majutsushi, which basically this means magic. Anytime you see magic in Japanese, the first part of it is probably going to have the character ma, like maho, majutsushi, madoseki. All those kind of words are probably going to have this character in here. And basically throughout the lesson, we're going to be slowly figuring out how to write this character from memory. It's pretty complicated. It has a lot of strokes. But the first thing is that the last stroke is this little part right here. So the way it's made has all these parts. Oh, I did that part wrong. <laughs> and it ends with this little move-like character. Hmm. So tef form in Japanese, we're not fully going to go into how to make tef form as it, it takes quite a bit. And instead, we're going to look at different verbs as they do it. But basically, tef form is basically the most basic building block of how to conjugate verbs. So like if you want to say, I am running, I ran, all things like that, a lot of the conjugation is related to te form in Japanese. So niru can be conjugated into ite. So ru is dropped and te is added. Niru, ite. Um, what's missing from the ma, which means magic? What is missing from the ma? Yeah. Ma jutsu. So that's correct. But I'm actually talking about the kanji here. The kanji is missing two strokes. Ah, it's missing the 
Mu. You're correct. Katha. Can you draw that katakana mu in there? Where is it supposed to go? It is um, um, annotate. Wait. Draw line. No. You have me? I'm hungry, but I can wait. No hurry. No worry. There. Perfect. Yep. And how would you conjugate nidu to look similar into te form? Te form. So it's the base kanji. Um, so it's ni. And then the te. Perfect. Yep. Ni te. And I'm kind of sorry, I told you Nidu is only for um, physical similarities, but it, 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 it's because I was thinking about Ol Naji, how it's different than Ol um, Naji, which is the same. But the difference is actually that Nidu just means similar. And I'm like, sorry for that. It's, it's just kind of like I was thinking about it, like, oh, I guess it's not just, <laughs> it's just, it means similar. So not the same, but similar. <laughs> what Any means. similar, but it's more of an, a, an appearance. It, it does Fine. tend to be used with appearance, but you can use it for the essence of somebody as well. So I, I was like wrong with that. It, it's literally right. just similar. Um, okay, so now we're missing three strokes from Ma. Hmm. What's missing? Uh oh, I suddenly forgot. Is it like this? Yes, correct. Okay, so there, that's the Perfect. three strokes. Yep. Perfect. So one of the things Teform is used to make is basically to tell us present tense. So earlier we translated some of these things like Nidu to look similar, as in they look similar right now, like Khan looks similar to a thief or something. That's actually not what the dictionary form of verbs are illustrating. The dictionary form is future tense or habitual tense. So in actuality, this sentence that we saw over here, thieves, um, dorobo wa bajushi to niru, it actually means thieves and magicians will look similar, will be similar. Uh, because it is a non, it's a non past form of yes. the verb. Yes. Yep. This form of the verb, which is called dictionary form. But it's, how, it's the form that's, you know? how, how do you know whether what that it's future tense? Yes. It um basically context because it's either going to mean future tense or habitual habits habits. Um, so as a verb, it's kind of odd to say most of the time thieves look similar to um magicians unless you wanted to um specifically express that uh a lot of times you'll have other vocabulary words that will help insinuate whether or not we're doing will like future tense or if we're talking about habitual tense it's kind of similar um in english we mark future tense with the word will like i will kill somebody we use will to mark the future or if you say i kill people I say, I kill people all the time. I'm not killing them right now. I'm not, I didn't necessarily kill someone yesterday, but I do this often and I will continue to do it in the future. I kill people. So the nidu can mean I will do this in the future or I do this in the future and I've done it in the past is uh, what it means. And all dictionary forms mean that. Um, it, it just, it's a little bit complicated when you first start learning Japanese to kind of th wrap your head around that concept that the form of the verb in the dictionary is future tense. Okay. Because in English, we don't have the verb in future tense in the dictionary. Um, we kind of do. We have it in a little bit like the habit. Tense. But yeah, if you want to say something is currently looking like something, you'd have to put it in te form plus iru. Iru is basically a verb that means to exist right now. Hi. Is basically what that means. 
So to exist right now means the action of the verb is only existing. We're only talking about it existing in this current situation. Do you know what ugoku means? Ugoku, to move. Yes, Or to, to move. move something out. Uh, specifically, ogoku is to move oneself. The subject will be doing moving. There's a different verb if you want to be talking about moving something else, which will be coming up later in here, which is an interesting thing about Japanese, which English doesn't do. But if you want to say con is currently moving, so adding the ing to the word move, all you do is put it in te form plus iru. So con wa ugoite iru. So how would you say con is looking similar? How do you think you'd say that in Japanese? This one is, uh, for the present tense, is kan wa nite iru. Nite iru. Perfect. Kan wa nite iru. Nite iru. Perfect. Now, what's missing from the ma? From majutsushi? Which is magician. Sorry, what the, the missing characters yes. are here. Yep. Here, here, and here. Perfect. Nice. So how is this part of this word red? Do you know? Um the this one is ma. Correct. So can you read the sentence for me? This one is dorobo wa majutsushi to nite iru. What does this mean? This means um, the thief will look like the magician. Oh, no, no, I'm sorry. The thief is looking like the magician. Exactly. Perfect. Yep. And what's missing from the ma part of maho? The magic word. Yeah, I'm missing these character, these strokes. Perfect. Here, here, and here. Nice. Okay, so now we're going to be looking at adverbs. So sure. adverbs in Japanese are either going to end with ku or to. That's just a random interesting note about Japanese. You're going to just, if it ends with a ku or to, it's probably going to be an adverb. Um. In this case, we're looking at a word that ends with ku, which is yoku. Yoku basically means good or well. So it can be it can also mean often. And the only way to know which is which is context. It's one of those like, oh. And so you can really choose whichever you'd want. So if I said kon wa yoku ugoku, this could mean kon moves well. He, he has some skillful movement going on. Or it could mean con moves often. And both of those are correct translations of the sentence. Whichever one it is, is context-based. Um, so where do you think yoku, which is an adverb, could go in the sentence down here? I have A, B, C, and D marked as possible locations we could put it, however, one of these locations is incorrect. It would be ungrammatical to put the adverb in one of these locations. Uh, it would be, I can describe verb and adjective. An incorrect, sorry, I'm kind of lost this one. I'm, yes, I yes. was kind of uh, grabbing my headphones so that, um, all good so but, uh, um, i haven't specifically taught you where yoku goes but um japanese as a language allows a lot of movement that english actually doesn't allow so because of how particles like wa and stuff like that kind of go at the end of words we can kind of tell what role a word has depending on what it ends with so adverbs in japanese most of them will end with ku so Yoku is an adverb. Ugoku also happens to end with ku, but it's a verb. And you can tell which one's an adverb and which one's a verb is because of the location. Verbs in Japanese always end sentences. They're always at the end. That is the one like 
hard rule of Japanese that all mm-hmm. sentences basically are going to end with do. Um, and there's only a very specific occasion where it's okay not to end with a verb. Um, so because of that, where do you think yoku can go in this example sentence on the bottom? So this one is... Oh, it's going to go in the C position. It can. It can go in the C position. Can it go anywhere else? Can it go anywhere else? Mm. Since this one described the verb, my guess is that it needs to be next to the verb. It actually doesn't so, have to be next to the verb. Yoku can go at the position A, at position B, or position C. All of these are grammatical. In general, you're correct. In general, you will see it in position C. This is the most common location. But there's nothing incorrect about putting it at A or B. However, D is incorrect. Do you have any guesses why D might be incorrect? Because the verb ended the the clause. Yes, exactly. Nice. You know what a clause is. I can use that word now. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Verbs should end clauses in Japanese. And this is a super useful thing to learn because eventually we'll be learning relative clauses. Not today, I don't think. But that is the most common way in Japanese to make big sentences is relative clauses. They use it way more than we do in English. Um. Do you know what yoku means? So yoku... I know what yoi mean. It means good. Yes, that is it is the same so it, word. Actually, you're correct. So now the e become the ku because Hi. we are turning that adjective into an adverb. I'm guessing correct. Exactly. Every single adjective that ends with e can be turned into an adverb by dropping the e and adding ku. That is a grammatical rule in Japanese. So that is correct. I've seen it. I've seen it in the case where I'm not sure they they use ku to have multiple adverbs. Yes. Or to change that is a true. series of adverbs. That is correct. Um, with um the e part of a, um adjectives like with um e which you call the yoi those are these are these are the same word. Um, with these, the E should be being attacked to a noun normally, or da, which is um, a copula. But like, for example, a noun could be kon. E kon would be good kon, kind of a weird sentence. Um, mm-hmm. Rewrite it like that. Why does it look so Is ugly? it true that you Hi. can put a yoi? Yoi is an E adjective. Yes. So can you put a da behind an E adjective? Yeah. Can it just so, be yoi by itself? Um, hmm. so, so when I was talking about da, it meant more like this. So you're, um, if I say kon wa e um, this. But you are correct. Yes. If you're doing this in short form, kon wa e would be more correct than kon wa e da. There is a certain situations that you could add da, which would be if you're adding extra particles over here, like e da yo, for example. If I was adding extra, I don't, they're not called, they're not actually particles, but basically they're things that go after the end of the sentence that add flavor to the sentences, like, um, you know, or bossy tones. They're kind of like tone signifiers. Um, if you want to add something like that to the end of the sentence, um, ya is not something but like ne or anything like that, then you would have to add da here. So then you could say kon wa i da yo, would mean kon's good, you know, would be a way to do that. Um, so you can't just say kon wa i yo. <laughs> so if, if that sounds a little bit like it's okay to let Khan do something <laughs> if you want Khan wa ida yo makes it more uh, Khan is good so that that's what that is um hi okay so yeah so yoku means good so this can be translated as often or to do something well 
like do it good. So when I say dorobo wa majutsushi to yoku niteru, this is probably um, with niteru, which is occurring right now, not often, right? Because if it's occurring right now, we're probably not talking about something happening often. So well makes more sense. Um, thieves look quite a bit, look a lot like. I guess a lot would look be work better in an English translation. So thieves look a lot like magicians. Um, so what's missing from ma? So ma is missing. I think it's missing a script here. Sorry. Perfect. One hundred percent correct. Yep, that's the first, and then it goes like that. I think that character means something. That's it does. Um, let's see. Think right there or something. it's actually the opposite of that if well not totally it means oni and not like ani like <laughs> um like uh oni cha <laughs> different words um mm. uh so oni means demon but but not like a demon like from hell normally more like a demon like an org an orc type thing still on zoom Mm -hmm. um so it's like a japanese demon-like creature so there's like certain like um religious like culture um festivals that have to do with oni and stuff and different you know folk tales um but it's kind of like a demon like orc like creature so they're not necessarily evil but a lot of times they might be treated as evil there's a really famous japanese folk tale about a red oni and a blue oni if you've ever heard that story. <laughs> it's a... I've seen it in picture books. I haven't yeah, yeah. read it, though. Yeah. I've only seen it in anime, so that's, that's, it's, that's yes. how common it is. But yeah, it basically means demon. So yeah, the kanji has demon and then tree, tree, house. So pretty random. <laughs> but kind of makes sense because um, this ma can also mean like evil in a way like magic is evil um this one was kind of funny things um can you read this word for me ma jitsu i'm sorry ma jutsu shi and what does it mean it means uh a magician perfect okay i'm gonna skip that okay so now we have i believe the first sentence from the book can you read it for me? Yes, so it's Dorobo wa majutsu shi to yoku nite iru. What does this mean? It means the thief looks quite a bit like the magician. Yes. Directly, I would translate this as thieves and magicians look quite similar to each other. I see. Because but that, yes. This. Yes. Otherwise, it would have been, as you say earlier, it would have been me. Hi. Exactly. Hi. So now we have a new word. Can you read it? This is su ri. Perfect. This means pickpocket. Pickpocket. Suri. Why is this in katakana? I'm guessing it's probably a loan word, but it's not a loan word from English. But it is very commonly written in katakana. Um, a lot of you will also see it written in hiragana in some cases, like in Percy Jackson as a random example. It is written in um, hiragana, but katakana is a okay way to write it in. Um, I see. Can you read this word for me? This word is ore, as in I. Perfect. Nice. Oops. Can you read the sentence for me? This is kon wa surida. He is a pickpocket. Perfect. He is a pickpocketer. Kon is a pickpocketer. Perfect, perfect. I'm skipping that because you got that <sighs> particle down good. So what is missing from ma? 
it missing the missing the tree character Pete. yep and it missing the only which has the I forgot what this character I think it's Shiro or something it does look a and lot like the... Shido. Specifically, though, it is Tani, which is Patty, with a little dot thing mm. up there that I don't know what that means. Um, Shido is this, which doesn't have a line through the middle. So due to stroke order, we know it's Tani and not Shido. Um, so you wrote that perfectly. Um, just letting you know, stroke order wise, key is the line horizontal first, then the downs. But um, you don't need to know mm. that fully for now but it's just yes. good to know and the down. yes like that exactly because if you write the stroke order correctly um if you write it absolutely horribly and messily you can still read it and similarly if you see handwritten ish japanese and manga and stuff it's a lot easier to read if you have any idea what stroke order things are supposed to be because you can like redraw re you can look at something copy the stroke order and look at your handwriting and be like oh this is she <laughs> you know, by um, copying the stroke orders. <laughs> um, hi. Hi. Um, can you read this for me? This is subayaku. So this isn't a verb. Do you have any guesses what kind of thing this might be? Like so, this is a ku. Hi. This is not a verb. It is not a verb. This is not a verb. Okay, so. It might be an adverb. It is an adverb. Yep. Subayaku means yeah. like swiftly. Ah, uh, from suba. Yai, probably. Suba Meaning yai. wing. Subasa. 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 I think that's just a coincidence right there. It means wings, right? Uh, tubasa does mean wings. Have you seen. um? The Tsubasa Chronicles <laughs> with Sharon and I I yes, very beautiful art. There's also um a comics from a while back. Tsubasa mm -hmm. is a soft it's about soccer. Oh about, yeah. I was the it's about, card uh, soccer. a soccer team. Yeah. So this comes from Subayai, which um I believe oh that does not mean what I what I thought about. Well, this part right here means fast. But they're doing That's fast true. nicely, basically, is how you can think about it. Subayaku, which comes from Subayai. Swiftly. Subayai. But this character also means Hayaku. Hayaku, right? Yes. That fast. is the character from Hayaku. Exactly. Yep. Hayaku and Hayai are the same word, just conjugated a little bit differently. Hi. So what's missing from... Uh, it missing key followed by you say Tana, was it? Uh yes. Tana. For example, shows up in the name Tanaka. This is the most common place you will probably see that. Followed by this leg. I think it's like Nin oh, or something like that. Yep. Perfect. Uh huh. So, this is just another page with adverbs. I want you to make the sentence, I will swiftly move. So, you have ore, which is I, subayaku, swiftly, and ugoku, which is to move. How do you think you would say that? So, suppose we use ore wa yoku, ugoku. Oh no no I'm sorry. Um ore ore wa subayaku goku. Yes, perfect. Subayaku. Nice. Perfect. Nice. So here's a new word. You should know what the first part of this is read. Can you read this for me? This is ma. Yeah. This is do shi. Oh no no, this is seki. Hi, Seki. Seki, you might have seen as Ishi, which I think that was coming from. This is a new word, Mado Seki. So, 
So do is, is there. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Multiple readings of words. So this is a very interesting thing about kanji is that in general, basically almost every single kanji has two readings. Some has a couple of some random ones have a couple more. Some might only have one. But in general, I would say 80 percent, maybe 89, 90 percent of the most commonly used kanji has only really two readings. One of the readings is the is I don't I don't remember the official names for things. So one of the readings is when it's lonely. It's out looking for a partner. It's like I'm unmarried, single, and ready to mingle. When it's like that, it has a different name than when the kanji is with other kanji. When it's married in a committed relationship, it's not out looking to mingle. So the this word right here means stone or rock. So when rocks by itself, it's ishi. So if you're just saying, oh, look, I found an ishi, you would just say ishi. Mm. Versus if I wanted to say a certain type of ishi, it's normally going to be pronounced as seki, which is basically the way it's pronounced normally when it's married. There is other ways, like there is like exceptions to this. As a runnable example, ishi tadami. Ta, ta. Hmm. Mm. I'm wrong. I don't know what that word is. Uh, th the word for stone pavement is uh, has ishi in the beginning, but I, I don't remember the rest of it. I'm sorry. But um, but yeah, seki just show up in other things like seki ban, which would be a wooden slate or something like that. So seki is the most common way things will be worn. Anyway, um, so this is magic. Do is like the way of like the way of samurai, for example, and stone. So it's a stone way, of, the way, the stone for the way of magic. So it's a some kind of magical stone that you use in magic. Um, in our book we're reading, this is basically their version of wands. So rather than having a mado stick, they have a mado seki, mm -hmm. which is a stone this, way of magic. This doll. Is Hi. the same as this door, right? Yes. Uh, so this the, is the also reading the way. So, so miti. Uh, that's how that's read on its own. Um, do in madoseki, you never see it on its own. I don't think. Or at least I've never seen it. Do seki. Do, do. I think the connotation for this kanji, if I remember correctly, is. This top part is the way, the yes. road. But if it has this bottom character added to it, it means to lead the way. That makes like sense. Lead. You are right. It, more, it shows up in miti shirube. To, to lead one on, onto that path, onto that way. Right. Yeah. So that would be the shirube. So it's the stone is the stone that leads you to magic or something like that. Yes. It's lead you to the path of magic. Yeah. It's more almost the opposite. It's the stone that guides magic would be the more accurate way to think about it. Just like how wands are used to guide magic as well. It's the guide. I see. <laughs> it's a tool. It's yes. used to channel things. Exactly. To channel magic. Okay, I'm gonna skip that. Um, do you know what this means? This means hand. Yep. Te. Te. So earlier we saw ugoku, which means to move. So it's like I move myself. If you're moving right. something else, you actually have a slightly different verb, which is ugokatsu. So I move rocks would be watashi wa. Ishi o ugokasu. So it's a interesting little difference in Japanese that we have two different verbs for moving things. Quick question. Yes. Is there a pattern to how one can usually guess whether this is a self act or an other act verb? Is it sort of like a like an ooh versus Sadly, an ah sound? there actually isn't a real pattern. 
um the 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 difference is transitive i think and intransitive is what those la labels are you kind of just have to learn the words as you learn them which is a little bit different than um passive and stuff like that which is a conjugation thing so these are our officially two different words in japanese rather than a real pattern um because they're because if you get a pattern there'll be exceptions to this pattern so it's easier just to learn them as you go on um than to have some kind of pattern in your head um hi so o is our new particle we're looking at which marks direct objects so it's what the verb affects things can you do me a favor and read this first sentence for me this sentence is majutsu shi I'm sorry, I'm still kind of cut off. Okay. Majutsu shi wa mado seki o ugoku, ugoku, ugokasu. So the magician moved the, the yes. magician moved the stone. Exactly. The magician moved the magical stone. We can just call it magical. Magic guiding stone. Perfect. So how do you think you would say, I will swiftly move my hand? In Japanese, we got I ore subayaku swiftly te hand in um ugo kasu. <laughs> so it's ore wa te o subayaku ugo kasu. Perfect. Ugo kasu. Perfect. Yep. Ore wa te o subayaku ugo kasu. Perfect. So what's missing from ma? We are missing the sort of the house and then the key. And then 